sir, I just want to say that uh, the, the problem which is in the basis of, uh, I think the problem, you know, uh, the resistance that Pakistani people often show against the change uh, is that, that that's very fundamental because I remember when I was in my, you know, uh, elementary grades, so we used to study Diniyat, you know, Islamic studies that time. So I remember the, 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 the seed of hate that is sold right away that time when we are in a very young age. I used to study that, the, uh, you know, the, the, the people of other books, the people who have, you know, uh, the uh, Anjil, the people who have Torah, those peoples, I mean, their books have changed. So what does this mean that if you, if you are teaching a, 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 a kid who's only, you know, like four or five years old, if you're teaching this sort of shit, to that guy, to, to, to that kid. So it's mean that you are not teaching them. Rather, you are just making them what you call that uh, fundamentalist from the very young age. So these things are, you know, it's, it's very difficult to change um, in the Pakistani people. And uh, what do you say about that? Like, uh, you know, uh, what do you think the future of such kind of people who have been taught about this sort of stuff from the very young age? Uh, how 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 long it can take them to change themselves to change their state of mind about uh, about the islam or about the evolution or you know about about this kind of things what do you say about that sir okay so muslims claim that the bible has been changed but the truth is that bible and quran both have been changed you know we don't have the Quran today that was, if, that was revealed to Muhammad. We are sure about that, that we don't have the same Quran that was revealed to Muhammad. Because, you know, there are a lot of verses that are missing from there. Because there were verses about stoning Absolutely. of adulterers in the Quran. In the, in the Quran, there were verses that were that were revealed to the prophet we don't have them today there were many versions of the quran there were there are a lot of other problems in the quran and there are problems in the new testament and the old testament as well so none of these books were revealed or were written in a way that we have today so mm -hmm. the gospels were not written by any of the close associates of jesus christ Paul was, Paul never met with Jesus Christ and his writings are the oldest texts of the New Testament. It is claimed in the Old Testament that the first five books of the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, Pentateuch or the first five books that are known as Torah combined, they were written by Moses, but that's also a lie because they were not written by Moses. It was not Moses who wrote those books. It was other people who wrote those books, maybe a thousand years later, uh, later than the time that is claimed to be the time of Prophet Moses. So if Moses is claimed to be somewhere around 1400 or 1300 BC, maybe 1500, between 1500 and 1300 BC or 200 BC, he's supposed to be. But the problem is the books of the, the first book, five books of the Old Testament, they were written somewhere between 600 to 400 BC and even they were finalized in the, the forms that we have today they came into being somewhere around 2 to 300 BC mm -hmm. so and they were not written by anyone of them uh, by Moses they were written by different authors at different times anonymous authors we don't know their names but we know that even there are contradictions in them there are contradictions in the Quran there are contradictions in the gospel. There are contradictions in the letters of Paul themselves. There are contradictions in the Torah as well. And Torah is not written by, these five books are not written by just one person. Mm -hmm. There were, at that time, there were two kingdoms of the Jews. One was the northern kingdom, the kingdom of the Israelites, that is known as. And there were, you know, eight tribes or maybe 10 tribes were there and the two tribes were in the southern kingdom that was the kingdom of judah mm -hmm. and the kingdom of judah referred to god as yahweh but the kingdom of israel referred to god as elohim or al and within the 
books of the old testament within the books we can see that they are there are writers who are referring to god as el they are diff- telling a different story of the of genesis and there is a there are writers within the same book within the same chapter we can see that there is there is a writer who is referring to god as yahweh and he is telling a different creation story one one writer is telling that the god created man first and then he created eve out of his rib and the second writer is telling us that god created man and woman together mm-hmm. so there are two parallel stories in the chapter 1 and chapter 2 of the book of genesis there are two parallel stories one is coming from the elohist source the one who believes in the elohim as or el as a god and then the second one is coming from you know the yahweh source and he believes that yahweh is the god and he's telling a totally different story of, of even the the ark of uh, ark of noah mm-hmm. so one of these writers uh, you know revers moses very highly but the other one doesn't rever him that highly the yahwist source always uh, uh, emphasizes on the stories of patriarchs isaac jacob and and, uh, and abraham but the other one he emphasizes more on moses he gives more respect to moses one of them is very much obsessed with the with the you know uh, with the idea of first born not getting the blessing from the father like you know uh, isau is the first born of jacob and he does not get the blessing from him so jacob gets the blessing from him because jacob uh, is more revered by the, the by the you know uh, tribe of juda mm-hmm. and tribe of and today we have only the, the and this is how it was going happening there and quran also has the similar story so we don't have any complete copy not even complete if not even 5% of the quran can be found before 690 no manuscript of the quran before 690 ad can be considered you know even nominal so all the qurans the manuscript the significant manuscripts of quran which have 40% or 30% or 70% of the quran come about 200 years after the death of the prophet in they start from the late umayyad period to the mid abbasid period so quran is also incomplete in that way then we have the problem of missing verses then we have the problem of abrogation of verses so when muslims tell us that there are no contradictions in the quran basically they are lying why they are lying because there are these verses that clash with one another like the first one the first verse is that clashes with the another verse is that don't go near namaz when you are drunk and the second one is in which it says that you know liquor or wine is prohibited so right. which one of these two verse though both of these verses are contradicting one another so the problem is then muslims come up with the idea of tansikh Mm. and they would tell you that there are no contradictions in the quran and quran would say okay you don't find any kind of contradiction in this book and we have contradictions in the book but the problem is then they would say okay this is tansikh these why verses have been abrogated but the claim of quran that it has no contradictions in it is basically a false claim why murani sir please let me complete why because because there are contradictions in the quran there are verses that clearly contradict one another but then this doctrine of abrogation comes forward so if you look at quran from a strictly textual uh, uh, point of view you find that there are a lot of contradictions in the quran but mm-hmm. the muslims have or the quran has trying has made a work around of it and it, it is saying that okay some of these verses are abrogated by the earlier verses so technically the abrogated verses should not be a part of quran the problem is this mm. but on the other hand there are some verses that are not even abrogated but they are not a part of quran today the mm-hmm. brightest example of this is the ayat of rajam or the ayat of stoning the verse of stoning in which 
which is mentioned by a lot of Islamic historians. It is mentioned in, in hadiths. It's, it, it is mentioned in Islamic tradition and history that any man or woman who are married and commit adultery should be stoned. So that is a Quranic verse, but it is no longer a part of Quran today. So how come we can say that Quran is preserved? Quran also is not preserved. Quran is abrogated. Quran is changed. Right, right, right. Sir, you are right because uh, these people who claim that Quran have not has not changed. Sir, I remember that uh, I had a Shia friend who used to discuss with me uh, when I was back in Pakistan. So, sir, uh, I mean, you know, he didn't have much knowledge about that. All what he knew, you know, he 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 just used to have uh, some some sort of you know cross religion uh, religious discussion discussion with me. And uh, one day I asked him that, uh, do you do you have you ever studied your Quran in Urdu? Do you know about the mm -hmm. translation? And surprisingly, the guy didn't know the translation. Mm -hmm. So then I told him that you are simply following a thing that you don't know what is written there. It's just Arabic written there. So you are supposed to read, you, should, you, you are supposed to, you know, uh, study the translation as well so that you come to know that what's there. So, uh, I mean, these guys are zombie. Galipai, see how the people, how these, you know, these uh, fundamentalists, they have changed their mind. Rather, they have just made them zombie. Sometimes you and Haris use that terminology zombie. I very much mm -hmm. agree with you that it, this term zombie is exactly and it's, it's being created for such kind of people. They don't know what's written there and they are blindly following it. How crazy this is. Yeah, because, you know, this is the norm. Whatever religion is given to us by our parents, by our society, we just believe in that. And it just, it is just part of us. And we are never able to, you know, remove that part of us or modify that part of us. So that's the problem. Childhood indoctrination is basically the reason that religion sticks with us for life. And there are a very few of us who are able to understand what is the truth about religion. Yeah. So that's so, the problem that we have. Yes. Sir. So in the last, just want to ask one thing. I just want to take update of that uh, dumbass guy who went across the border from Pakistan to India. That uh, is one who, who was probably from TLP, who just wanted to put down that uh, Nupur Sharma. Is there any update about, uh, about him, sir? I don't know. Maybe we can ask one of our Indian friends and they would give us some details about him. How he, he is doing and what is happening with that guy. But uh, I don't assume that he would be doing very fine, you know. You see, sir, how crazy the people are. This is what the TLP has made. No, but people, uh, you know? for that guy, I feel sorry. I feel sorry. Why? Because mm -hmm. he has been indoctrinated in such a way that this guy does not even understand the concept of border and he does not understand that if I cross the border and go into, into India, you know, it would be a very terrible situation and none of the people of Pakistan, my family wouldn't be able to help me. So I don't know. I think this guy has some psychological problems as well. I, 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 I fear that, that he might have some problems. So maybe uh, I don't know if the government of India could be generous enough, put him in a mental hospital and treat him and when he's well, send him back to Pakistan. So that would be the ideal thing to do with this guy. But we don't know because, you know. Right, right, right. I there just, would be people uh, in India just, who would also want to do politics on the, the basis of this. Right, thing. right, right, sir. I just watched a couple so of your clips. I just want to uh -huh. watch a couple of your clips on him, like uh, about, uh, you know, about his sacrifice of his tashrif to Indian police and Indian yeah, government. Yeah. So that was really crazy and, uh, you know, hilarious. And, uh, you know, I mean, initially I was, uh, it was sort of funny to me that how, how come a guy, you know, can do such kind of ridiculous mistake that yeah, it, it just... feels funny, but it is also <laughs> sad at the same time. Sad as well. So you are right. You are I, right. I want to, I want to, you know, I, I make fun of him because I want these other people to, you know, understand that this is not a good thing to do. That's why mm -hmm. I make fun of him. Otherwise, but I feel sorry for this girl. He's this hardly like 25 years old, or I think yeah. 22 or 23. And I think in a way he has... I, a, he's 26 life. years of age. 26 years See. of age. Yeah. He's so just a kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, 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 sir. 
okay sir thank you thank you very much for giving okay. me this time and once again i would just like to say you that uh, you know although a lot of people they are giving you abusive words and you know they are no i don't don't worry about that. that i don't i don't sir, give it a sink second thought you know you know mm-hmm. all that already just continue your work sir you haris and uh, mahlij and uh, you know you guys are doing excellent job uh, i just keep on following you guys and uh, really i mean you know sometimes i do the night shifts and you won't believe whenever you know you, uh, there, there is your stream your stream is about mm-hmm. like you know 4 to 5 hours despite mm-hmm. of having another night shift on the next day still i watch your stream mm-hmm. so i mean no, uh, no. you guys you, you guys are doing great job and uh, science bless you all uh, uh, we, okay, we, we, you. we appreciate we appreciate callers like you we do mm-hmm. appreciate callers like you thank you for coming okay thank, thank you sir thank you, thank you sir have a nice day bye bye